we're trying not to fall down and break our $35,000 heads. <laughs> and, and he's jumping from the side of frame into frame and landing going, awesome. I'm going, you yeah. son of a bitch. Don't start like that. <laughs> Welcome, friends and fans, to another episode of GalaxyCon Live, where we are bringing the convention experience directly to you. And today, we are going back to the sewers with some amazingly talented uh, people from the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles franchise. So without further ado, let's grab some pizza and bring them out. Our first guest is an actor whose body of work includes Star Trek Deep Space Nine, Ray Donovan, and Joker. Today, he joins us to discuss the role of being the super performer and voice of Raphael in Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the movie. Please welcome Josh Pez. Hey, hey. Hi, hey. everybody. Yeah, Josh, how you doing? I'm doing great. I, I'm looking forward to uh, answering some questions, talking to people. I'm, I'm, thrilled to, I'm thrilled everybody's here. Absolutely. Well, so glad to have you here. Oh, wow. You have such a nice, you have a nice little, nice little background going on there. Yeah. 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 <laughs> this is my house. This is my uh, studio. Very nice. Very nice. Yeah. So, uh, Josh, so glad to have you here. And um, yeah, I talked this before. Uh, I had the pleasure to see you on stage and that was a lot of fun. And I'm glad uh, several decades later, I'm finally able to thank you for that performance. Yeah. Yeah. My pleasure. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, once again, thank you for joining us. And next, our guest is his credits include Star Trek The Next Generation, The Muppets, and of course, Dinosaurs. Today, he joins us to discuss the role of Michelangelo in the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the movie. And in part two, Secret of the U's, please welcome Michelin Siste. Cowbunga. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, uh, so glad to have you here, boss. Um, we're at GalaxyCon. We're a big fan of dinosaurs, so thank you so much for your contributions on that. Uh, absolutely, one of our favorites, Kurt Thatcher's big friend, big friend of ours. So, thank you for joining us here. And uh, how are things in your corner of the world? Thank you, Patty. They're doing very well, and I'm really happy to be here with all you guys today. Oh, uh, pleasure is absolutely all ours. Once again, thank you for joining us on the GalaxyCon virtual stage. And I see you've got uh, you've got the got the character behind you right there, rocking out. <laughs> yeah, he's always over my shoulder, giving me notes. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Ah, and next, he is a performer and director whose credits in front and behind the camera include Adventures of Johnny Tao, Soren to Justice, and Star Hunter. Today, he joins us as both Raphael and a member of the Foot in the first two Ninja Turtle films. Please welcome Ken Scott. What's up, guys? Yeah. Hey, everybody. Glad to be here with Josh and Mish and everybody who's joining us. Patty, you. Absolutely. Our pleasure, boss. Uh, how are things in your corner of the world? Man, things are fantastic, really. Um, people often say I'm living the dream just as a joke, but I truly feel like I'm living that right now, so it's really good. Uh, right on. Well, thank you. Thank you for joining us here today. Absolute delight. And speaking of delights, our next guest, he is one half of Partners in Crime under the stage name MC Golden Voice, who joins us to discuss the hit signal, Turtle Power. Please welcome Richard Usher. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. What's up, guys? Richard. <laughs> What's up, team? Uh, Richard, how you doing? I'm doing well. Uh, hopefully, uh, well, I might be on a slight dis delay because I'm coming to you guys from Gotham City. But other than that, doing <laughs> really well. And uh, just glad to be here with the TMNT uh, crew, man. Absolutely. So glad to have you here. And next, he is an actor whose credits include G.I. Joe, Lost, and The Expanse. Today, he joins us as the Shredder in Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2, Secret of the Use. Please welcome back, Francois Chow. Yes. Hey, guys. How are you? How's it going? All right. What's up? Hey. <laughs> Good. Okay, so I, I, may have, I think I've overdid it a little bit. I was trying to recreate the you know, it's like walking up to the table at the con, but uh, <laughs> I, I keep seeing that my huge head in the back here. It's just it's very, it's 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 great, man. It's uh, great. Uh, it's Raymer great. Land and Rosie Greer. It's the beast with two heads. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> Where's your mask? Make it real. Where's your mask? I know. I, I kept having to do this a lot. Uh, <laughs> absolutely. That's why, that's why. How you been? I've been great. Been great. Oh, I, I, you know, it's weird. I, I've seen I've seen Ken uh, a few months ago, but these other guys, Mission. I don't know if I've seen you since ever <laughs> since since then, right? We we and Josh, we, nice to we meet were you. in one show together yeah, nice to years yeah. ago. <laughs> yeah, 
Thank you all for joining us here on the GalaxyCon virtual stage. It's an absolute pleasure to have you all here today as being a part of this wonderful franchise and the series of films that have made so much to so many people and our fans in the audience. So on behalf of them, half myself, I thank you all for your talents and I thank you all for the performances you brought to the role. And I thank you for the professionalism that you showed during it all. It's, it's, it, it really did this. These films really mean a lot to so many people. So thank you all really. Thank, thank you, you, Patty. Appreciate that. Absolutely. We absolutely. Our teams go to the chat room right now, pulling out the questions for us. In the meantime, I'll just like to throw this out for each of you. What do you think was probably the most memorable day uh, either on the set, uh, uh, the films, or maybe in Richard cases, either while recording or writing the thing, or maybe during the video? Ooh. I would say for me, um, and Misha, you can correct me, but I don't know if the, the first scene, uh, the, the one that sticks into my mind was when we're walking down to enter into our lair uh, for the first time, and we were fully suited up. There was water beneath us, yeah. and we were, you know, chugging along, and everything was slippery, and it was like, and we were trying to, you know, be really energetic, and and I was like, wow, this is going to be, you know, it was, this is going to be quite a ride, um, <laughs> and I was like, okay, we're, we're, we're in for this, like, you know, could barely breathe. Everything was slipping. Could barely see. Uh, but it, but so, you know, amidst all that, we had a we had a really good time. Yes, we did. It was a fantastic time. I remember that. That was the first scene. The first scene for me was the one with Leaf in the sewer with the pizza delivery thing. But right. that was the first scene that all four of us shot. I yes. remember that. And yeah. th there was Dave Foreman. We're trying. We're trying not to fall down and break our thirty-five thousand dollar heads. <laughs> and, and he's jumping from the side of frame into frame and Lanny going, awesome. I'm going, you yeah. son of a bitch. Don't start like that. <laughs> I would say for me, the most memorable scene was on the first movie. Um, it's the scene where uh, Raphael rescues April O'Neil in the subway. And in that scene, um, I'm doing the stunt work for Raphael. And the first thing they asked me to do was go up into the subway tunnel. And this is New York. It's a real subway station, but it's shut down, or so we've been told, for the duration of shooting, right? Because we're on the tracks and everything. So I'm in this turtle outfit. I can't see anything. I'm shuffling up the tracks, trying not to touch the third rail or anything like that. Yeah. They tell, I got to go about 50 or yards or so up into the darkness and then turn around and wait for the director to call action. And then I'm supposed to come out of the subway and go to do the rescue. Well, as I'm sitting there waiting, just breathing, can't see anything, a train starts coming around the corner. Oh the light, God. that wind that you feel in the subway when a train's coming. And I thought to myself, who screwed the pooch on this <laughs> one? <laughs> Check the right box, because I'm about to die, because this station's supposed to be closed. Well, that train kept getting closer and closer. I couldn't move at all. I thought I was dead. And then it passed me just like, three or four yards away on another set of tracks wow. that I was unaware of. So I thought I was, I almost peed on myself at that point. Wow. So that's what I remember the most. Wow. Didn't, didn't anybody wow. tell you that those foam latex suits are great insulators? You could have stepped <laughs> all over that third rail. <laughs> 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 Got a tap dance on the third rail. Yeah. <laughs> that's good. Francois, uh, I guess, go ahead. I'll go after. My, my turn. Uh, I don't remember, um, any particular scenes, uh, but uh, I, I do. I do remember thinking, "Wow, man!" The first time I was in in full shredder gear and and uh, and so forth, I thought, "Wow, this is great! I'm in a, I'm in a movie. I got a job. It's great." Uh, and then when we started shooting, you know, I don't know why, but the the helmet was real. It was like heavy metal, and then they gave the shredder this big big old cape. So <laughs> I was standing there going, can't move my head too much yet. And then when it, I'm like, I'm thinking, ah, oh, crap, I, I, man, we should rehearse the uh, walking around in this cape and stuff because this is like, you know, I'm just, I'm, I'm sort of stuck. But it, it was still, you know, it, it's, it, it's an amazing, uh, amazing thing to be part of, and uh, um, it, I'm, I'm still amazed that uh, here we are just talking about it, right? And Francois, you had one of the most impressive entrances ever in a film. 
No. <laughs> When That's you came true. in great. with that shadow coming down, right. that was yeah. right. that was brilliant. That was well, yeah. you know, uh, it wasn't it was it wasn't me. It was <laughs> it was a camera angle. <laughs> and, and the <laughs> yeah, but you look great. That's right. That's, you made it work. Uh, Nobody marvelous. can make a shadow That's like important. you, man. <laughs> <laughs> you awesome. cast a long shadow, friend. So, so Patty, for me, it was two quick uh, great memories. One was the first time that uh, I heard it, the song on the radio. Um, oh, wow. I was working at a radio station in New York City at a different station, and I had uh, one of the other DJs that works with me. She was listening. It was Z100 was playing it. And wow. she called me. And she's like, she knew I was doing music, and she's like, do you have a record that's out? And honestly, I hadn't <laughs> known it was even really... <laughs> I didn't know it was even released yet, to tell you the truth. I, they were working on it. I didn't know it was released. So she's like, there's a, there's a song on the radio with a guy who sounds just like you. I was like, what are you talking about? <laughs> and I went to Z100, and sure enough, the record was playing. So that was just a wonderful, uplifting charge to hear that. And wow. the announcers were, were all into it. And I remember when the song finished, the announcer was like, um, transform by the, from the norm by the nuclear goop. He's like, so once I heard that, I laughed and I loved it. Um, the other great, the great other memory was going to Times Square at two or three in the morning with the turtles. Um, and you know, it's typical New York because no one was freaking out. So I guess they were like, "Okay, it's either another <laughs> film or these are wacky people out here." So they kind of were still walking by and just looking and keep it moving. So that's New York. But it was beautiful. <laughs> and that was that was long before all the uh, the, the the cosplayers were at Times Square, you know, That's like, right. taking the pictures and asking yes. for donations. So. That's right. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Uh, I, I remember that night. We're standing there eating slices of pizza on the streets of New York. Yes. And nobody gave a damn. <laughs> yes. Just like, oh, Sabal yeah, yeah, another, another homeless pizza. turtle. Yeah, and that was kind. Of, that was also a tail end of the. Uh, for lack of a better word, the dirty years of Times Square. Oh, that's true. That's true. So, you know, Greedy. anything is still kind of going. Yeah. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> right now, if, awesome. you know, if they if the turtles were out in Times Square, they'd think it was something where you'd take a picture, you know, because all that's the right. superheroes are out there yep. you know, collecting yes. money. That's right. That's yep. right. Yep. Hey, Different. we could have a new uh, monetary stream. <laughs> oh, no. uh, yeah, to, there you go. If I tried to wear a turtle suit now, I'd probably have a heart attack. <laughs> <laughs> I sleep in mine. <laughs> there you, there you go, there you go. Like, this is good one, in here. Do we get one from you? Get a memory from you uh, from the production, Michelin. Oh, okay. Uh, in in addition to the one that Josh mentioned. My favorite scene in the first film was uh, when we were sitting around the tree and the campfire uh, when uh, Splinter appears in, in our vision. Uh, that was my oh, favorite yeah. scene in the film. Yeah. No, absolutely. That's mm. that's a beautiful one. Yeah. Very nice. Oh, uh, looks like Nick will not be able to join us for this. However, for our audience oh, members, man. if you did get a one-to-one -one chat with him, uh, it is a different uh, platform format, so we should be able to, uh, to honor those, so do not fret. In the meantime, we are good to go on our audience questions. So, gentlemen, thank you for indulging my capricious curiosity. Let's go ahead and roll our first one from our audience. And this comes from Alex. Um, does anybody have any uh, any special memorabilia from any of the films? Hmm. You know, I keep telling people, if I had known, I would have, uh, <laughs> I would have gotten a couple of things. But it was like, hey. It's over. Uh, time to go home. And I'm like, uh, okay. Now I'm like, ah, I should have uh, to get something. Uh, hell, my, uh, so, all right. Uh, uh, Michelin, yeah. you, obviously you got nothing. You brought nothing from the film. No, okay. I didn't save anything at all. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I saved, I saved my heroes. These are my hero chucks for both, both films, even, even though they stayed in the holster most of the second film. But these, these combat cold cuts... I only got just got these uh, this year. Nick wow. had been given both pairs of my combat cold cuts from when we shot it because he had to follow up in in the in the following coverage, 
So he got them. And then about, about a couple of months back, he mentioned them. And I said, oh, I never saw them. He said, oh, I'll send you one. So now I have my combat gold guns too. Ah. Nice. And nice. I, and I beat the crap out of myself with both of them. <laughs> there you go. And Ken, you got some weaponry as well, don't you? Oh, yeah, I got the uh, size, yeah. the size from, from Raph. Um, I walked away with those. I, I'm curious to know if the other guys, if Mish or Josh, do you guys still have your original scripts from yeah. that movie? I have my shooting script. Yeah, the script is an amazing thing for those. Josh, do you still have yours, do you know? I don't know. That's such a good question. I for don't those who don't know, yeah, in the Comic-Con world, the script wasn't just a regular script. On one side was all the words and just like a normal script, but the other side was a complete storyboard yeah. of the entire movie. That so, was in oh, two. No, the number one. I didn't have that. Oh yeah, I got one. Oh wait a minute. No, I'm <laughs> sorry, you're right. I did. I think Yeah, number two they didn't do yeah, it. Yeah. Number one they did it. And so it's like a whole graphic novel of the entire movie, actually. And I still have my original script with the original brands wow. and everything. I, yeah. I, I am stunned that has not been printed because a lot of I would love to see that. But yeah, yeah right. the, and yeah, you're right. The storyboards within a script, I've never I've never seen that. I've seen some illustrations sometimes, but I've never seen a full storyboard. Given more time, I'd go get it, but it's in my safe. <laughs> <laughs> As well, it should be. Yeah. You should keep it there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, speaking of treasures, uh, what you got there? <laughs> yeah. Whoa, look so, at that. Ooh. Yeah. So, Patty, this is, you know, really a, a blessing. Uh, the Platinum Sales Award. Uh, Damn. You see, a, you see a cassette? You see a cassette as well as a CD? Yeah. Wow. You remember those, you remember those wow. guys? <laughs> yeah. uh, what a what a real you know it's been a blessing it's been an honor to to be able to um be an ambassador uh for the turtles and to do the music and to hang out and all the fans that support us i just really love you guys and i really appreciate y'all so this is this is my my movie memorabilia i i'm stunned i i've cert i've never seen a platinum <sighs> cassette before i yes. <laughs> i didn't know they gave a, we've all seen the records but i didn't know right. they did yeah. Yeah. That's all. Does this mean there's some right 70s there. guys with gold eight tracks? I absolutely. I, I'm, I bet you there are. I bet you I, there are. All right. All right. I, I learn something new every day. I love this job. <laughs> That's what's up, Patty. I, ha I have the side that I trained with, uh, but not because uh, Michelin and uh, and Leaf and I trained with a guy in Brooklyn, uh, and also we trained somewhat in New York City. Yeah. Uh, with our, you know, with practice size, not the ones used in the movie, but I, I that's what I, that's what I have. Nice. Can I nice. tell you the story about, about the, the practice chucks they sent me? <clears throat> no. They first, they first sent me uh, a pair of chucks with a note saying, here, you can, re you can re rehearse your uh, chuck work with this. They were wooden chucks. So I thought, oh, okay, I guess I'm dumping into the deep end right away. <laughs> so I was beating the crap out of myself, like I said. I had welts everywhere. And about two weeks later, another box shows up from production with, with nice rubber-coated, soft-handled chucks that said, oh, here's your rehearsal chuck. We sent you the wrong pair. <laughs> so for two weeks, I almost killed myself. <laughs> That's crazy. When I, was a, when I was a kid, I used to do a lot of nunchucks as a martial artist. And in the movie... I'm actually, the, for those that don't know, I'm actually the foot. Misha and I have a scene together where he walks in and he goes, oh, a fellow chucker, eh? And then I'm doing the nunchucks against Michelangelo. I'm the foot soldier doing it. Oh. Well, somebody sent me the outtake just recently from those scenes. Oh, and wow. I'll just pop them. I don't know where they got it, but it's me popping myself in the head a couple of times. <laughs> but I sympathize with you, Misha, because when I was a kid, I used to practice with a skateboard helmet on. Really a good idea. Yeah. That's a great That's idea. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's uh, I, I, I had a few uh, nunchuck uh, uh, bruises on my noggin from my teen years as well. So I absolutely sympathize. So, and Alex, great question to start us off with. Thank you. Hey, what do we have next from Lynn? Ah, are any of you uh, fans of the original comics or the any of the animated series? And I think they're up to like six versions of them now. Wow. Something, yeah. I, for me, I saw the comics, uh, 
you know, prior to filming, I wasn't even aware uh, of, you know, I remember when my agent told me I had an appoint, you know, an audition for Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I couldn't even, it just, my brain was like, what? <laughs> um, and so then um, Steve Barron gave me some books with the, you know, all the graphics and I was, I was really impressed with the the visuals and the vibe and um, you know these original comics that were very dark uh, mm. were they had a lot of power in them. Very much so. I, I, I want to, if it's okay, I wanted to side sheet off that question because I'm interested. Sure. I know Michelin, you're a you are a dancer and you brought a dance background to Ninja Turtles, and I, I I'm not sure exactly how you ended up in a suit per se. <laughs> <laughs> but like Josh, I know you're an actor and you were doing a lot of theater and you're from New York. How did you find yourself auditioning for a suit movie? Like, why was that in your purview? I mean, it was, uh, you know, there, I, I don't think there were a lot of suit movies happening. And it was literally, here's, you know, you, you have an audition to be a turtle. And I was like, what? <laughs> and and they and my agent was just just go just go and so I didn't even know you know really what I was getting into and I was you know I just treated it like uh, the character in the script like this guy from New York who ha you know and I came up you know I grew up in a in a pretty tough neighborhood and everybody was trying to walk so that they were bigger and tougher than they were um, and I'm sure I had to do that you know as well. And so I just was like, and then I was like, you know, like, I was like, well, turtles move like this. And so I kind of put it all together and just kind of, you know, physicalized it. And I had done some uh, martial arts. Uh, I think I used to get mugged all the time. And then when I was uh, about 12, um, I took uh, some martial arts classes and and nobody messed with me after that i think just because my energy was outward yeah. and more um focused but i did like a few kicks in the audition and you know and that put it together you know next thing i knew you know we were being flown to london to put you know being cast in you know body cast in these suits um so i didn't even know half of what i was getting into well, I, we had a similar experience, my agent at the time and I, we, we laughed because we had never heard of them either. The books that I saw were the ones that, uh, that Steve Barron gave us. And yeah. then Peter and Kevin, very lovely of them. They gave us signed copies of the original mm. uh, during the shooting of the first movie, which was really brilliant. But yeah, I, I had no idea what it was. Ken, thank you for mentioning that. I, I was... Dancing was one of the things I did. I was a Broadway actor. I had done five Broadway shows by the time that I got called in. And the reason I was called in was that in two of the shows that I had done, uh, I had it, it started with, uh, there was a, I, I did a stint in the crocodile suit in Peter Pan uh, mm -hmm. for, for one cross. And uh, then I did a show called um, Raggedy Ann and I played Panda. And that was uh, in a suit that was made out of shag carpeting, almost as bad as foam latex, let me tell you. But that's why I had gotten the audition, because they had mm. they knew that I had done those two things on Broadway in those two shows. And wow. then when I did Cabaret, when I wasn't on for Joel, because I was his understudy as the MC, I, was, I had a role in the show. And part of what I did in the show, besides playing Bobby, was to be in the gorilla suit in a number called If You Could See Her Through My Eyes, where the MC dances with the gorilla. So then was it another reason why they said, oh, he puts on suits. Let's give him an audition. <laughs> yes, you have yeah. Well, I appreciate you guys sharing that with me. Um, I, didn't mean, I didn't mean to sidetrack from the question. I'll Bro, be, no. I, um, in reference to that question, people always ask me that. You know, I go to a lot of comic cons and stuff, and I don't, besides what you see here, just like a poster and the couple of things, I don't have Ninja Turtle stuff. Like I don't have pictures or, or action figures or anything around the house. Um, I always, you know, and I, I don't, I'm, you guys are probably the same. There might be a couple of things here and there, but I, I always tell fans, I'm like, my experience is 
kind of different. It's like from the other side of the character. And just like Josh and Mish, I didn't really, I, I knew who the Ninja Turtles were because I was a martial artist and I'd heard of them, but I'd never read a comic or seen them or any, I just heard about it. It was this crazy thing. So going into it, I didn't know anything about it. And I learned it all by making the movies and being in the movies. And that's when I'd be on set and I'm like, who's that? And they're like, that's April O'Neil. And I'm like, what's an April O'Neil? And somebody <laughs> explained all the parts to me. So that's kind of stayed with me. So I'm a fan of all things Ninja Turtles because when it comes out, it creates Ninja Turtle energy, which yeah. is good juju for you know anybody involved with Ninja Turtles just because people are talking about you around the world. So it's good energy. But in terms of like particular comics or Michael Bay movies or anything like that, I don't, I don't see them or watch them or yeah. anything like that. Yeah. Well, again, if you, if you, if you all gotten the, uh, the original black and white Eastman and layered, uh, uh, versions, then that, that was really all you needed to work off of and then your own interpretations. Yeah. So, yeah, so that, that totally works. That totally works. Anybody else, uh, uh, either, uh, either pick him a fan, uh, maybe a little bit of fan afterwards or whatever, or just sort of keeping up or it was just, everybody was just like, yeah, we, we did the bit. Yeah. I, 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 I was a big comic book reader when I was a kid. So I knew, I had read the, the Ninja Turtle stuff. Oh. Um, and I knew, you know, I knew all about them. And, uh, and then I, when I watched the first movie, I thought, wow, you know, it was pretty amazing that uh, you see the turtles in the suits and, and the way they pulled it off. And it was just, wow, this is great. Um, yeah. You know, I, I, when I got the call that I got the job for the second movie, I thought, oh, yeah, you know, because I can. I've been a martial artist pretty much, you know, since I was, I don't know, 12, 13. And I thought, oh, this is going to be fun getting to jump around and do some stuff. And then, of course, I show up and, you know, there's the there's the cape. <laughs> <laughs> a 20 pound cape. Yeah, so pretty much all I did was stand there in the cape, going, "Hey, you know, Foot Clan, get that, get those turtles," kind of thing. <laughs> you did great. You did. You made it work. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely, um, absolutely. Patty, I would say for me, uh, the A and R um, when we heard about it for the film, the A and R record executive asked, um, "You know, we like the demo that you guys have, but what we really have on the table right now is a new." Uh, a kids movie, um, something that we need a song for right away called the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And had I heard of it, I said I knew about the cartoon because I'd seen them on TV, um, and maybe a little bit about the comic book. Um, so that was my first really uh, getting to know. But I did know the cartoon a little bit, and then of course I got to wonderfully get to know Kevin Eastman. Um, so I have some signed comic books which I treasure and love. Um, yeah, that's my that's my thought. And the 2012. A lot of the different cartoons, but the 2012 TMNT animation, I, I really enjoy it um, in the writing. So that's my thought. That, that is a good one, indeed. And let's roll another one. And that means we have this question comes up a lot. And from Kelly, who wants to know, what other fandom would you like to have seen have a crossover with the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles? So this could be... You know, Star Wars, the Marvel Universe, the New York Mets, something with the following or a fandom, you know, it's not limited to fictional, you know. Vivid video. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been interesting. <laughs> Lots of suits. <laughs> <laughs> Or no suits at all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I thought we thought because we bumped into them so much on the on the cons, it would have been fun to see Power Rangers with turtles. Well, that's happening now. And they no. did do they did do a crossover one time. There was a show, Power Rangers and Turtles together. I did not know. And yeah. then now they're coming out with some toys right now that's a blending of the different Power Rangers with different turtles. Wow. <laughs> Yeah. Hmm. Like I, just recent in terms of crossovers, um, I saw one, uh, one of the action figures that you see at cons is a blending of the Raphael and the wrestler Sting. And it's Raphael and Sting morphed into one creature. Wow. And it, yeah. And there's like three other, like Macho Man, I think is Michelangelo. And, but there's four wrestlers and four <laughs> turtles all blended. So those are kind of interesting crossovers. 
But if I could see one, it would be Flash Gordon, Sam Jones, and Flash Gordon with the Ninja Turtles. I would be very, I yeah, uh, that I would be very down for that. I've seen uh, the, I think there's, I've seen the Turtles Batman crossover um, comic. I think somewhere, some, there's, yeah. it's out there somewhere, right? Yeah. Yeah, they've, they've had uh, cross. They've done an animation as well, so it's done in comic yeah. and animation. So, but it's always just Batman. I I always thought eh, you could do the do the whole do the Ninja Turtles and the whole Justice League. That'd be interesting. Yeah, yeah. that'd be kind of work. Man, work. Who's got we'll Josh? Got a crossover you'd like to see? Uh, how about Joker? Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, and I yeah. Can play both sides of it. Mm. Uh. <laughs> yes, yeah, somehow you could be in the back of a car, and Joker rolls across the hood, and there you, you go. Say something. There you yeah. go. <laughs> oh wow, uh, uh, Richard, you got one? It would it would be the Batman that came to life. Um, they brought that and made it happen. Now, and in fact, in Rock the Half Shell, the song we did for the 25th anniversary, one of my lines is, forget the bat signal, just hold up a pizza. And so that's <laughs> in the show. And that was before, that was before um, the crossover came out. Yeah. Which is oh, great. They, right on. There you go. Okay. Callie, oh. <laughs> thank you. Always a great question whenever we get that one. Uh, what's next? From Allison. Um, does everybody have any favorite quotes? I mean, there's the obvious one that I always get attributed, which is nice. I love being a turtle. Mm -hmm. Said with a little more, but that's right. Right, yeah. Mine would just be one word. Damn. Damn. Who's <laughs> <laughs> uh, got another line? I remember I the cons. I'm, oh, go ahead, go ahead, Ken. Oh, I was just going to say that people, people say them to me and oftentimes mm -hmm. I'll get Misha's lines said to me, <laughs> not, be, not because of who I am, just they'll, but they'll say like, pizza dude's got 30 seconds and stuff <laughs> like, or a uh, wise man say, don't pay full price for late pizza. I get that thrown at me a lot. Well, orange, yellow, orange, red, very yeah. close. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Those are all great. It's funny that mine is just. Quotes oh. that uh, people people remember. Uh, fans always come up and say, "You know, can, can you just say this to say this out loud?" Babies, they're babies. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> the way you uh, said these turtles, that really set me up the wall. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Love that. Uh, yeah, there you go, Perfect. Richard. You got. That one, Tur turtle power, man. The yeah. the rooftop, the rooftop you scene. Go. You know, it, it it became iconic for me, so we we loved it. That, that and uh, uh, Jose Canseco, that. Tell me you didn't play. <laughs> yeah. <full> <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's a that good one. Good. <laughs> yeah, that too. There you go, Allison. <laughs> thank you. Fun question. Ah, I think we have time for one more. So let's see if we got a really fun one. And this comes from. Phoenix, what is everybody's favorite holiday tradition? Hmm. We are in the holiday season. I like eating at Thanksgiving. Yeah, yeah. What's your What's your favorite uh, uh, favorite part of the Thanksgiving meal? Carbs. Anything that's carb related. <laughs> <laughs> He doesn't see them for the rest of the year. So, <laughs> are you kind of carb, try to little carbophobic the rest of the year? Oh you? no, not at all. Not <laughs> at all. I mean, when I'm when I'm trying to hit fitness, yes, of course. But I'm a car. I love it. Give me mac and cheese and mashed potatoes, stuffing. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right on. Yeah, Thanksgiving hey. is Thanksgiving is pretty good. It's it's uh, for me. It's sort of the. The ultimate cheat day, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Doesn't count. Yeah, it's also Thanksgiving <laughs> is the least uh, um, pressure, least kind of neurotic, um, you know, of the holidays in a way. 
<laughs> yeah. Um, and, just, you know, just, for me, it's just being with, you know, friends and family and sitting around and, and, uh, um, I love cooking. I don't do it all the time, but I really, um, just to have the whole day committed to just kind of the pleasure of eating and hanging out. Um, yeah, thanks. Thanksgiving's, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm down with Thanksgiving. I, I, I'm down with you on that because yes, I've gotten older. I've appreciated it because Christmas is as enjoyable as it is. It's predicated on, I have to, I need to, I've got to. And Thanksgiving yeah. is a pretty optional across the board. <laughs> you can do whatever you want. It's just about, yeah, friends and family and chilling. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I agree. I'll, I concur with the guys. Yeah. <laughs> all right. There you go. Mission. Next year, next year, Thanksgiving, all of us together. <laughs> yeah. try no, oh, no. <laughs> Are you <laughs> Yeah. Well, it's at Josh's house. I'll do that. <laughs> uh, right. Michelin, Michelin, do you want more of the Thanksgiving thing? You got a little other uh, Thanksgiving or uh, holiday tradition you enjoy? Well, no, I mean, any any holiday spent with friend, family and friends is uh, ideal as far as I'm concerned. And because we haven't been able to do that very much the last couple of years, it's even more precious now. So, yeah, it doesn't matter to me which holiday it is as long as you're with the people you love. Absolutely. And amen to that. Gentlemen, it's been an absolute blast. Any final words before we take our leave? Um, I'll just throw out things that I have coming up. Um, I just finished this series uh, on Hulu uh, called The Dropout uh, about Elizabeth, the Elizabeth Holmes, uh, oh. this woman who created this Theranos uh, device, oh. which was all <laughs> kind of a con. <laughs> uh, a different kind of con. Um, so I, yeah, so I just finished that. I'm super psyched about that. And I'm just, um, I'm just so touched by how, you know, this movie that we all did, how it just resonated, um, you know, with, you know, with the fans and it's kind of, I'm still surprised by it, um, but also really touched by it and really appreciate um just how um how vocal everybody is about how the movie resonated with you know with them it's very it's it's a very sweet thing uh uh yes. yeah absolutely i agree 100 percent with all of what josh just said uh and, um uh, my stuff you can currently see me drumming with animal as animal uh, in the geico commercial that's running right now oh cool and we got a couple of oh, other nice. things in the fires with muppets but I can't talk about them, obviously, but there's some hope that things will be uh, picking up again as they, they were planned to be before pandemic. Right. Uh, and otherwise, I would just like to say uh, again, along the lines of what Josh just said, that the best part of this whole experience has been the fans. Uh, the things that you share with us have been the gifts that keep on giving and giving and giving, and God bless you all for that. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I um I share that sentiment obviously with Josh and Nish um and the rest of you guys as well. It's amazing that you know what we did or what we were part of changed the world. You know, it is a different world because of the Ninja Turtles and the movie, and it's part of the fabric of society now, 30 years later. You know, people often say to me, Oh, the turtles are coming back. I'm like, the turtles never left. They're now just as much a part of our culture as Superman or Batman or anything else. They're here. And it just like for my generation, mm -hmm. Star Wars was the mythology that I learned about around the campfire. And that those were the heroes that I looked towards. Ninja Turtles is a mythology for a whole other generation. And they they subscribe to the behaviors of those four brothers and 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 how they become one and all that stuff. So I've seen a lot of people live that and have the experience to deal with all the fans. For me personally, um, for those that don't know, I wrote a book about it. It's called Teenage Ninja, The Mutant Turtle. Um, it's a, you can go to turtleconfessions.com to check it out. It's on Amazon. It's an Amazon bestseller. And it talks about how I became Raphael and the goals that I set to do it. And then all the crazy behind the scenes stories and what happened on the movies and me meeting all these other guys and, how much they meant to me and what I learned from everybody. Uh, so if you want to check it out, go to turtleconfessions.com. Cool. 
Great. Uh, the the Great. perfect Christmas gift. Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> He's an author. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just just to touch on what everybody else said, it's it's um, you know you meet the fans, and it's for me anyway. It's very um, it's sort of humbling because so many people come up to you, and and, and you guys know this. They say, "Oh my God," you know. This movie was such a, a big part of my childhood, and this movie really made my you know when I was a kid and I had I was going through through bad stuff or whatever. This this movie really helped me out, and I can you know this is this is this has lasted you know these guys are you know and and girls that come up to you they're you know they're uh, they're getting up there in age. <laughs> <laughs> they still you know you go wow. Um, you just feel so lucky to to have been a part of something like this, you know. Uh, that it's it's uh, I don't know. It, it's it's kind of overwhelming sometimes when when you talk to the to the fans and they just they tell you these things and you're like, man, I you know, I <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like, Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I I, I think, guys I appreciate the fans. Uh, so much. They've they've meant so much. They've shared so much with me about how much the song meant to them, uh, and that they know all the lyrics. And the highlight uh, recently was at the Oscars, February um, twenty twenty Oscars. Lin Manuel Miranda gave a shout out to songs, uh, best songs of motion picture. He named a couple of songs, and one of them was Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle ah, Total Power by Partners right. in Crime. Oh. It blew me away. It really did. Wow. And uh, he's since been on the Ryan show to talk about the song. He's tweeted a few times that he knows the lyrics to all this lyrics. So <laughs> it's been a blessing. I thank all the fans, everybody. It's been great. Without That's you, excellent. Richard, there's no Hamilton. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I love Hamilton. He's he uh, you know, well, cracking me up. <laughs> uh, well, gentlemen, once again, thank you for joining us on the GalaxyCon virtual stage. It's been my absolute privilege to serve you today. Thank you to our audience for joining us today. And thank you for your great questions. Hope to see everybody again soon. Until then, bye-bye, everyone. Take care. Happy holidays. And remember, smiles are free. Spend them often. <laughs>